video, we're going to talk clutch. In this video, we're going to talk clutch for those of you out there that have the seven speed manual transmission, which if you didn't know, that's what I have in Bronk Buster. Uh, we went out early on, of course, we were doing some experimenting um, very early on with putting 40 inch tires. We were the first ones in the country to put 40 inch tires on a Bronco. And uh, of course we saw failures with the steering. That's where we came up with our solutions there. But in that testing, we got to 1500 miles on Bronk Buster and the clutch was toast, smoked. And uh, that was about a year ago, um, right between King of the Hammers and United by Bronco. And there was no clutch available in the country. So we call up our friends at uh, South Bend Clutch. My brother is a, uh, a big, uh, big time diesel mechanic that he's shopped with them and bought products from them for years. Absolutely love their products. We call them up and they transfer us to one of the, the main guys there. And, and uh, the funny thing is, is that immediately they said, wait a minute, you have a clutch off of a manual transmission Bronco because today we got our first uh, flywheel in, but we can't get our hands on the clutch itself because that's something we want to start developing. So it was a match, perfect match at the time. We decided let's work together with South Bend and uh, come up with a clutch. So immediately we pulled the clutch out, we shipped it off to them, and they put a new, uh, they just resurfaced the, uh, the material because it was completely toasted. We left the, the uh, dual mass flywheel in there and uh, just kept going while they started developing the, the dual mass versus a single mass flywheel and do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. You can see one single mass here. This dual mass, if you watch, you see that moving, mm -hmm. rotating. It's actually nice for drivers in the car that are not used to shifting very well or not very good with the clutch. It actually will allow that to slip a little bit while making contact uh, in our scenario with great big tires and doing what we're doing. We don't want any slip. What, what happens with slip? Why don't we well, want slip? A lot of slip is heat. <laughs> heat will make this start happening. This right here is already upgraded by uh, South Bend. They originally, we <laughs> sent them our old one that was like, Nothing left Nothing of it, left, destroyed. Yeah. Um, they went ahead and they repacked this. They, uh, this is the ceramic side, and that goes on your pressure plate side. And uh, this is what it looks like just after three, 400 miles of hard rock crawling. It's still slipping like crazy. Oh yeah, oh you smell it everywhere. Right. This is a much more solid, more rigid plate. Uh, this has a, just a few more moving parts in this that's what's called a self-adjusting clutch um so basically your pedal as you wear through this your pedal stays the same um back in the days people will be familiar with the more wear on this the further the clutch i believe mm -hmm. goes to the floor to engage that or disengage the clutch and that's why when your clutch is gone it's like man you're on the yeah floor almost. so uh you know, Luke Clutch, they come up with the self-adjusting. They did, I mean, really, it's pretty good for most drivers for just a daily driver vehicle. And these fingers are, you see, much smaller than this. And this going back more, but this, this is, is a pretty built clutch material, what they use for their, their race applications. So we're going to put it to the test.
And with this, this is a simple flywheel. It's lighter weight, which with that lighter weight, we get a better throttle response and we get with more throttle response, we get a little more horsepower. Now, I can't tell you exactly how much I did notice a difference. Um, the clutch is engaging. This here is a combination. This is a, what they call the stage two clutch. So it has still some uh, um, synthetic material and it's got ceramic material on the other side. So this would be kind of the in-between. We also, on Bronkbuster, I have the ceramic on both sides. So it's a full ceramic clutch. But we have kind of went and experimented with all of them as we developed that with South Bend. And I kind of made a prediction because we saw probably the first failed clutch in the country um, and we were only at 1,500 miles. We knew that that was probably a little extreme. We weren't going to see very many there. But I'm starting to get a lot of calls and not a lot of people understand or know that there is a clutch available out there. So. I really want to get the word out so you guys don't have to sit there and wait for the eternal back order of Ford to get you a replacement clutch that's just gonna do the same thing again. Um, if you wanna rock crawl in your Bronco, I recommend the South Bend clutch. Look up some details and more importantly, this coming week on our live stream, we're gonna have Mansell from uh, South Bend Clutch on our live stream with us to talk about clutches. And as always, this has been Bronk Buster tested and approved. So if you know it's been Bronk Buster tested, it's gotta be good for you. And don't forget, smash that like and subscribe button because that's how we get this content pushed out to you. And click the notify button. That will notify you when we drop more videos. Again, thanks for coming along with us and hope you enjoyed this video. All right. Well, welcome everybody tonight. Appreciate you joining with us uh, to talk clutch because this is a uh, this has been a fun project over the last uh, well, about a year. We've been working together with South Bend. We have our special guest on tonight, uh, Delton from South Bend Clutch. Delton, say not, hi. Not not Mansell. Not Mansell. It was going to be Mansell, but I think Mansell got camera shy or something, right? Something no. like that. <laughs> something like that. No, he had something come up, but uh, uh, Delton does a lot of the uh, uh, lot of the same stuff and handles the social media. And he's been an expert for uh, how long you been been in this? I'll let you kind of do an introduction about yourself and uh, what what your experience is. Yeah, so uh, I've been in the in the automotive industry about 19 years now. Um, had my own shop for about six years, specifically on the diesel side of things. And uh, back in April of 17, uh, started working with uh, Peter at South Bend Clutch, which is one of the owners. Uh, the, the company is owned by uh, three brothers and went on the road working uh, outside sales to uh, promote the product line and work with our installation network. Um, so I've been all over, all over the nation uh, at numerous events, primarily in, in the past, I've, uh, primarily been at, at more diesel events. Um, that's probably going to change to a certain extent this year and moving forward, uh, trying to hit the, the off road market a lot harder. So yeah, it's been, it's been fun. Awesome. Well, um, Sorry, I was. We had a special guest on, coming on tonight too that has a clutch, and I'm having a hard time. He's having a hard time getting access, so we apologize. Uh, I was trying to get him on there, but anyways, we'll uh, we'll deal with it on another another end. But uh, wanted to talk about okay, why why upgrade the clutch? I mean, that's that's the biggest biggest question everybody has. What's the difference between the stock loop clutch and uh, and your aftermarket South Bend clutch. So one of the one of the problems with the Bronco application is the fact that it is a dual mass flywheel. Uh, most of the, the later production vehicles now are going transitioning to a dual mass flywheel. We've seen that um, over the years, 
in the diesel applications, um, you know, they've used dual mass flywheels. And what it does, the, the main reason behind the dual mass flywheel is it helps helps absorb the, the vibrations of the motor as the motor's firing and everything to, to create a smoother engagement, um, to help deaden some of the drivetrain noise and, and things of that nature. The problem with dual mass flywheels is there's a lot of moving parts. So essentially you have two pieces of metal that um, are connected with a, a series of springs internally that literally, as, as it showed in your, in your opening video, um, it, it allows it allows the flywheel to oscillate, and that that causes obviously it's a lot of wearable parts, so and a lot of moving parts. Um, it, the reason that OEs are using this is primarily due to creating a, a better driver experience. The other thing with the with the Bronco clutch is they're using a self adjusting pressure plate. So basically, what that means is as uh, as a pressure plate is made into a flywheel, you have a certain thickness of your of your disc in the middle. As that disc wears, your levers change position. So, um, as as it wears, your levers will will actually push towards the transmission further, which in turn, when you press your pedal in, creates a different release point. And so, the idea behind a self adjusting pressure plate is as your disc wears and gets thinner it still maintains the same amount of lever travel so that your engagement point on your pedal remains the same. Again, it's just a lot more wearable parts, uh, a lot more moving parts. So with, with our design, we, we identified those problems um, and built a solid flywheel, uh, conventional style pressure plate. Cool. Well, I wanted to, I guess, talk a little bit about my personal experience, and then we do have Dave. Dave Gutenberg is is in the in the back. We're going to pull him in here in a minute, um, but I want to talk about, I guess, what brought me down this road. And uh, you know, some of you guys might know. I'm sure most of you that are on watching tonight, um, one of the first, you know, real slippages that I experienced was actually with Lightbright doing uh, You Gotta Be Nuts. And that was part of the reason why when I got almost to the top and I couldn't quite make the top, I had too much slipping in that clutch. And then there was just multiple applications in rock crawling that, that I, uh, that I experienced that, but that was on forties. And prior to that, Amy has a little bit of a story, um, that, that she wants to, to talk about. So. Well, I don't know if I want to talk about it, but um, when we first got uh, the Ronk Buster, I did not want to have anything to do with it because it was a manual. I know how to drive a manual, but I also don't like to. And so I put it off and put it off, but then it was our daughter's first day of school and I told her I'd take her to school and I go outside and realize I don't have a vehicle to take her to school. So I was like, all right, I'll just suck it up and I'll drive the Bronx Buster. Well, the whole way there <laughs> was smelling so bad. I didn't think, I didn't even realize it was me. I thought it was somebody out there. And, but after I dropped her off, the smell was following me. So it had to be me. I pull over and I call Tyler and I said, come and pick up your Bronco because I'm done. I'm not taking it anywhere else. <laughs> and I haven't said in that driver's seat. So. <laughs> so it kind of gave her a little bit of a, she got a little gun shy because uh, like I said, it, it, it was smoking the clutch pretty good. And for weeks after that, you could smell it. So we didn't get off to a great start uh, with the manual. I loved it. Um, but I can say that when we finally came to the point of failure, which was at about 1500 miles or so um, rock crawling. And then, um, you know, we we actually were stumped because we called Ford and said, hey, um, I need a clutch. Um, I had a have a contact that is pretty good at finding parts for me. And he said, well, bad news is it, it doesn't even show it says back order, but it doesn't even show when or possibly we could get our hands on one. So we were kind of at a, a standpoint, didn't know how to move forward. And uh, so I, I ended up going making phone calls. I was calling different supply places and my brother jumps on the phone and calls South Bend and through several transfers actually ended up with Mansell 
who uh, was kind of a little bit taken back that we were calling about a clutch because it just so happened that what that same day he received a flywheel, right? I'll let you tell this part of it uh, because you, you were there when it happened. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think the, the Broncos were released in 21, correct? Correct. It's the first model year. June. Um, June so they started rolling off the assembly line. Yep. Yeah. So I think it was, um, I want to say it was like August or September. Uh, I was out at a, at a local event, um, off-road event. And, you know, the Broncos were, you know, the first ones were just showing up and everything and walked around and I'm like, Oh, sweet. Here's Bronco stick my, you know, look inside of it and everything. And it's like, Oh, it's, it's a manual. So got on the phone with Mansell and I'm like, Hey, listen, um, I didn't realize they were putting manuals in these things, but Hey, let's take a look at this. And uh, it kind of through the hustle and bustle of the shop and everything kind of fell by the wayside and it went probably about two or three months later or so. And uh, uh, we were on the phone and I'm like, listen, I said, we need to get our hands on one of these things. I think they're going to be a pretty hot deal. And it went like a week later and he calls me up out of the blue and he's like, Hey, he's like, you'll never believe this. He's like, I got this, this Bronco specific shop out of Texas that, that has a failure on these things. He said, I, I think you might be onto something here. I'm like, well, let's, let's team up. Let's figure it out. Let's, let's get something made for it. So that was kind of the start of it. It's uh, I don't believe in coincidences. I think it was supposed to be that way. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and bring uh, Dave in because I think it'd be a good time to hear his experience. So, Dave, how are you, bud? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah. Good. Sorry about that. A little bit of a uh, trying to get you on. We yeah. No, no, no worries. Thanks for having me. You guys hear me? Okay. We can hear you loud and clear. Okay. So tell us who you are, where you're from, and then what Bronco you have, and maybe the experience that you've had recently. Yeah. So I'm from uh, Denver, Colorado. I actually own Automotive Imports. So we are a uh, we specialize in sales and service. Uh, we have about a 17 bay service center, primarily European cars. There's a NSX behind me, um, mostly Porsches and Audis and Mercedes, um, but we do get some of the domestic stuff in here. The Bronco, so I have a 2022 um, uh, four door Bronco, black diamond edition, um, with some light modifications. Uh, it has the Whipple intercooler, um, an intake, exhaust. Um, and some JB4 tuning on it. And this is a vehicle, you know, I've broken a lot of cars where it's a self-inflicted gunshot wound, and I can say I did that. Um, but this sort of peeved me because this was a failure that is clearly a manufacturing defect. Um, I, don't, I don't take this off-road. I have a Razor. So, like, the extent of anything sort of strenuous with this Bronco would be towing the razor is about the uh the most strenuous thing that we do with it um so i took the vehicle skiing um and if you guys are familiar with colorado oops sorry losing here there's a, a pretty steep incline um coming from the base of silver Point, colorado to the top of the eisenhower pass at the top of the it took about two hours to go from the bottom of the pass to the top of the pass um, and traffic was just crawling and I'm so gentle on my clutch that I use the crawl gear when I'm going up it. So that way I don't even have to let the gas out. And ironically enough, there's, you know, we're, I'm smelling burnt clutch. Right. And I'm like, of all the violent things I've done to cars, I've never put a clutch in it. So I'm telling my son Carmine that it's the Wrangler in front of us. Um, <laughs> and, deep, right? yeah. lo and behold, you know, and then all of a sudden, um, my clutch just drops to the floor. Um, and then, so at that point, you know, I sort of identified that, you know, maybe the break, maybe the clutch fluid's boiling. So I, I pumped it and I was able to get, you know, clutch function back. And then I happened to take off right at that point in time, um, traffic started to move and then started going down the pass. And at that point I had no gears. So I had to float gears all the way home. Um, it was about 75 miles coming down the pass and, Ironically enough, my sister works at Ford. So I was able to call them and say, hey, here's what's going on. And I sort of got the like, well, you know, your car's modified. And I was like, yes, I do. And then I got the, well, we're seeing failures. But just so you know, we our, our transmission guy is two months out. 
And for me, you know, I didn't want to go ahead and just replace this with the same thing that's already in there because I'm going to be in the exact same spot. And I had already made a service appointment previously. Um, and I told the advisor, I said, I'm hearing noise from my throat bearing. You can tell as soon as I depress the clutch, the sound goes away. And he proceeded to tell me that it was a second or third gear synchro. I said, but the car's not moving. Jeez. So we've got a clutch on order. Um, yeah, I'm excited. It's uh, it should. I think it shipped today. So hopefully you get that in your hands really quickly, so you can get your Bronco back, right? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I I certainly miss it. So other than that, how much? How have you liked the Broncos? Have been uh, been a great experience. Other than that, yeah, I've had a bunch of Wranglers, um, and I still have. I have an, an 05 Unlimited, um, but, I, you know, we're so high in elevation here that turbo stuff just runs so well that I love the EcoBoost, and, you know, I, I love everything about it. But, I, you know, again, I always tell our advisors, the customer knows their car the best because they're in it every day. And I could start to tell that my clutch was changing in function and in sound. Um, and I think ultimately what we're going to do um, – well, you can see I already have a, a new throw out bearing here. So we're going to be, and I think the other thing is, um, we're going to be replacing this with dot four, I think on the, the second go around, um, you know, just to prevent that from boiling. Gotcha. Well, we actually were talking about throw out bearing um, before we got on here and started. Uh, so that's something that uh, Delton is going to look at for me as well for maybe an aftermarket solution. He has some ideas there. So stay tuned on that. Um, and so Dave, I appreciate you uh, giving us your input on this. You are welcome to stay on with us or you don't have to, I can, I can let you go too, but. Uh, I appreciate all of it. I'm going to, uh, we're going on 12 hours here and I got three kids on spring break. So I'm going to need a divorce attorney if I don't get home, but uh, thank you guys. And I look forward to it and I'll send you information as we, you know, yeah. kind of get the install in. And if you guys come out with a throw out bearing, I mean, like I said, we, we have the technicians here and we do all the work in house. So love to see it. And I'm excited. Yeah, about it. Oh, by the way, if you go to South Bend's website, you guys can't even select the product on your site. You know that, right? What do you mean? You can't select the product. Like if you like look for applications, Mm -hmm. I think your newest model year vehicle on there is like 2014. On the on the Bronco? No, like if or, you go on your site to like search for a clutch. So it, it's funny you brought that up because um, I'm actually in the process. There there is a cataloging issue um, within the website, and I'm actually in the process right now of revamping the entire cataloging process. Um, one of the issues that we have is the engine model or the engine size. So the leader of the motor and the year of the motor need to be switched. So the way it is currently, you select your make, your model, your engine size, and then the years that are available in that engine size. So it gets really confusing, especially if you're looking at like some of the Chevy applications, oh, yeah. um, because you know you have the 5.3, but you, you have all the different options and then you click into there and oh, my year's not available for there. So you gotta go back to the engine size. So it's something that I'm aware of that, that we're working on. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to have that corrected here within the next week or so. Awesome, well, thank you guys so much. I'm real excited to try this product and, and again, it's, you know. Yeah, I think you'll love it. On. It's been a, been a great Perfect. experience for me. So thank you, uh, Dave, for coming on and we'll uh, talk soon. Yeah, thank you guys, have a great night. Thank you. Okay. So if I can jump in there, if I can jump in there real quick, um, not to take the show, but no, no. So please. what he was, what what he was speaking to there about how he was he was driving and it just seemed to be slipping. So one of the things that I didn't mention um, in in when when we designed the the conventional style pressure plate. Um, one of the things that, that we look at as manufacturing is we don't want to, we want to increase clamp load. So in other words, the, the, the poundage per square inch between the pressure plate and the flywheel clamping on the disc. We want to increase that because that helps our, our torque capacity. But when you do that, the, naturally you increase the bearing load. 
So the, the, the load against the bearing. And one of the problems that we have with these centric style throw out bearings, which is the, the throw out bearing that is the slave cylinder, all one unit. One of the problems that we have is they, they're very sensitive to uh, what, what we call bearing load. Um, so one of the things that we've done um, specifically with, with this clutch kit is, is what we call um, changing the lever ratio. So we can actually increase clamp load while maintaining bearing load. And it all comes down to the lever ratio and how it actuates um, over the fulcrum point. And so in, in, in his case, you know, you're running a bigger tire, you're, you're creeping through traffic and everything. Um, you, you, that, that initial start and, and stop all the time is, is just riding on that. Um, one of the things that we found as well is that factory pressure plate is a really, really light um, mm -hmm. uh, clamp load. And I think one of the reasons that OE did that was so that they could keep the bearing load light as well. So with our pressure plates, we've actually increased the clamp load by 30% over the factory pressure plate, but we've maintained the bearing load so that we don't have the, the throw out bearing issues. Because obviously in his case, with it being a centric uh, throw out bearing, your, your, your fluid is on that bearing. So when you increase friction, you increase heat, it, it, it actually starts boiling that, uh, that fluid right there on the bearing. Whereas the, you know, more of the conventional style clutch fork and slave cylinder setup, your slave cylinder is off to the side and you've got a clutch fork that's making contact with your, with your bearing. So you don't have that direct heat on it. So, you know, the, one of the things that, uh, that I've experienced is it, I mean, it's definitely a, a major change. In fact, I can actually drive on the trail in when I'm in four low, um, without using the clutch at all. I, I can literally just sit there and, and just kind of finesse it through. I couldn't do that before. So what, what difference, I guess, what would be causing that difference? between the two clutches, being able to just easily, not, I won't say real easily, but I can, I can definitely, for instance, okay, I'm in, I'm in low gear um, and I'm stopped. I'm sitting there in on the trail and I want to get going. I'm, I have no hill or anything in front of me, but if I just kind of start pushing it into first, it, it almost starts pushing the vehicle and then I can just uh, put it in. What's the difference between the two that allows me to do that? That's real interesting because um, that that in theory should be a synchro issue, um, you know, where, where your RPM matching. Um, hmm. Okay. So so what 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 you're what you're saying is you can basically put it into gear without using the pedal, or easier. I mean, yeah, I, I've been able to when it's in like to go into crawl gear to be able to move the mm -hmm. vehicle. I've just sat there and experimented. You know, I spent a lot of time on the trail, especially when you're following sure. behind people. And so four sure. low, of course, 538 gears, very low geared. But yeah, yeah. I can just kind of feather that in and it starts to kind of engage and move and then I can I can pull it into gear. Well, and 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 obviously that's because of your your gear reduction. Obviously with the okay. with the big tires, the the gear, you know, you're that that's that's probably more than anything what's allowing you to do that. Okay. Cool. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is um, over the OE assembly, um, our complete assembly with a solid flywheel, um, traditional um, style pressure plate and everything, we're, we're roughly about three pounds lighter than the stock yeah. assembly. So the especially especially with the 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 broncos having such a small leader motor um and with coming out factory i mean these things are coming out factory on 35 inch tires 35s and 37s i think right uh, i um, mean 33 up to 35 yeah okay okay um so you know you're putting a lot of stress on on a very small disc so we we grew the outside diameter of the disc on on our application by about two millimeters which doesn't sound like a lot, but um, you know, if, if you think of the tires, you know, it's 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 easier to turn 
a 30 inch tire versus a 40 inch tire. Right. Um, and all you're doing is you're growing the outside diameter. So if you think of that as a clutch, it's easier to slip a 30 inch clutch right. versus a 40 inch clutch. So if you, you know, even though it doesn't sound like two millimeters, doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're adding it to the outside, you're actually increasing your torque capacity substantially. Um, yeah. So when you have that, plus you add the the 30% more clamp load, um, and then our, our friction material on top of that, uh, the coefficient of, of the friction materials that we use uh, allows you much, much better holding capacity. Cool. So I know everybody probably knows South Bend as the premier diesel clutch, right? So yeah. Tell us about your experience in the off-road and uh, are we going to see you at some maybe future events with us? Yeah, so uh, you and I were actually talking earlier today um, before going on on air. Um, I, I think uh, South Bend Clutch as a, as a brand is very well known in the diesel industry. Um, you know, with us bringing out the, the twin disc application for the diesels, that that kind of changed the whole game um, in the in the diesel world, and so a lot of people, uh, a lot of people view us as being a diesel only company, when in fact it's it's diesel is only about fifty percent of our business. Um, so, you know, we're very involved in in the automotive market, uh, the Subaru market, the WRXs, um, the Audis, the VW market. Um, We've always been involved in the in the Jeep market as well, um, but we, we really haven't. I, I, let me rephrase that. We've we've always built kits for the Jeep market, but we haven't really advertised in that market or really pushed that market. And that's going to be one of my big goals here in the next twelve to twenty four months is really getting into the the off road market uh, with with the Bronco Clutch. We're first to the market with uh with a clutch kit for the bronco uh, we also released uh, the end of uh, q4 of last year we released the jl platform so the jl jeeps the 2018 to current so those those applications or, or that oe application is a dual mass flywheel with a twin disc clutch um, and one of the failure points on those is the fact that the that the steel floater plate between the two friction discs is vented like a brake rotor and so it's very very small amount of solid material and so you you slip it a little bit it heats up it fractures and comes through the bell housing um so that that was kind of an easy fix for us in in identifying the failure point and then rather than reinventing the wheel we we basically developed a a solid floater plate utilizing the stock assembly. Um, one of the other platforms that we just, uh, or the other application that we just brought out uh, Q1 of this year was the Mahindra Roxer. So uh, the, it's basically an off-road vehicle. It's like a three quarter scale uh, Jeep. Um, and what's nice about that is it's a, it's a common rail turbo diesel. So guys are starting to tune these things and, and take them off road and everything. and Again, we're we're one of the first to the market there with a clutch kit for that. Um, the Mark Seven VWs, so the Jettas and the Golf, and the I'm sorry, the Mark Eight, um, is uh, is a, a hot a hot mover for us as well. Cool. Somebody said uh, South Bend Advantage over Center Force clutches. Yes, definitely. Right. We'll agree with that one. Yeah, we'll just leave that. Well, let, let me touch on that a little bit. Um, okay. and, and, you know, competition, I, I'm a big fan of competition because competition mm -hmm. drives innovation. Absolutely. Okay. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of competition. Um, I personally feel that the friction material that we use is, is a much higher quality friction material material than, than pretty much anybody else in the industry. The reason I say that is, so for instance, um, your stock style uh, material is what's referred to as organic material. Um, so our 
organic, what we call our performance organic material, which in, in, in the Bronco application is going to be the entry level, the, the, the entry level clutch. It's organic material on both sides of uh, the disc. It has a very high woven brass material embedded in it. So literally, if you take one of our clutch discs and lay it beside a competitor's, you're going to actually see a lot more woven brass material in there. So what that woven brass material does, it, it, the, the base material is organic. So when you think of organic, it's biodegradable, it's, you know, it, it gets hot, it disintegrates, that type of material. Mm -hmm. um, with, with the woven brass material, it allows it to, the organic material to bond better, but it also allows it to dissipate heat out of it a lot more efficiently. So in turn, it creates a higher burst point. So when you're talking with clutches, the, the RPM at which that clutch can spin before it actually bursts, um, we, we actually have a higher burst point on our performance organic material than, than some of your entry level organics. And, and that follows through with, with the ceramic material. Um, we use a lot of Kevlar material. Um, what's different with our Kevlar is uh, typically speaking, a lot of Kevlar materials have a lot of uh, paper filler in them. They're not actually pure Kevlar. Um, and then we have the ceramic materials and the centered iron and all of that kind of stuff. So specifically to the Bronco, we built that in an organic material. We built it in a uh, multi-friction material. So it's organic on one side, ceramic on the other, and then a full ceramic setup. Cool. So I, I missed a question up here earlier. Sorry, uh, Mark, you'd asked this a while ago, but is, is the slipping what allows for crawl feature on the manual? Um, I, I don't come from the off-road industry, so I, I can't specifically speak to the lingo here. Yeah. Um, when, when you're talking about the, the so it's, crawl feature, it's a seven speed. So what he's referring mm -hmm. to, I think I'll answer this cause I, I'll say no. Um, okay. it's a seven speed manual transmission. So the crawl gear is just a super low, low gear. And, okay. uh, you know, so it, it's all that is, is a lower gear, but the slipping, the, there's no advantage to the slipping other than, like you said, originally, like early on in this it maybe makes for a little bit uh, more gentle experience um, for um, maybe a more novice. Well, see, that's the hard part. That's kind of originally so, what I thought, but yeah, go ahead. So, so what I'll add to that is typically speaking, uh, organic material, which is what traditionally comes in, in an OE application is, is very forgiving. It's, it's light and easy on the engagement. Um, the, the more aggressive you go in the friction material, um, you, you think of the difference of different grits of sandpaper. You know, a, a super fine grit sandpaper it doesn't have a whole lot of resistance. But the higher you, the, the more grit you go, the higher you go in the grit, the more resistance it has. So your organic is going to be a smooth engagement and give a nice driver experience. But in a crawling application, where you're going to have to feather that clutch or you're going to have to ride it a little bit, maybe bring your RPMs up and kind of slip it into gear. Ceramic material is actually a better material because what it's going to do is, is uh, handle excessive heat much, much better without actually breaking down. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, no so, for sure. But the, but the trade-off of that is when you're, crawling around town, um, you know, trying to go through a parade and shift gears, it's going to feel as though you don't know how to drive because your clutch pedal is, your engagement is going to be more of an on off type switch because mm -hmm. it's more aggressive material. So, and, and that's what, you know, when it comes to clutches, a, a lot of people want to be able to hold all kinds of horsepower and torque, but yet they want it to drive like a stock vehicle. And, and there's, you know, there's a certain trade off, like you, you can't, you can't have both, but I think what we've been able to do um, throughout our brand is be able to um, dampen. So, so there's a couple different tricks in how you build that disc um, in, in, in how it engages as well as the dampening within the hub. 
which makes it a little less abrasive on the engagement. And that's a couple of the industry tricks that we've figured out over the years to make a more aggressive material drive a little bit nicer and have a better user experience. So, um, you know, one of the things is that uh, you say nicer experience and, uh, oh, shoot, I had a thought process here. Somebody messaged me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been one of those weeks, guys. I'm sorry. I've been going on almost no sleep coming back from Sand Hollow. But, oh, that's what I was going to say. Yes. When we when I was climbing up the, the chute backwards, um, and, and I showed in that video this last weekend, um, I will say that I was able to go pretty i mean you can see i was going very slow it's one of those you don't want to go fast up so i was able to just let off the clutch let off the gas and that's an instance where you don't want slipping i mean if, if it starts slipping on that you got to give it more gas and that's where disaster can happen so that that is why i use that video is because in my head it was like well that's a perfect scenario of you know i have a lot of weight and uh you know if i don't do it just right you, you know if you saw one of my uh, social medias I put out the Jeep that went right behind me. He didn't get that line just right. And he tumbled down to the bottom and um, it'll be in the new video I'm putting out. But uh, so, you know, it can, it, it actually, in that instance for me is a safety issue. You know, that's, it's something yeah. some of those instances off-roading, you do not want that slipping to be happening. So, yeah. Well, uh, let's see. What else? We have any other questions? Um, there was a couple other things that I was going to talk about at the beginning and I totally missed it. So I guess before we, we transition to the next part of the show, um, is there anything else that anybody has questions on the clutch or Delton, do you have anything else you want to add? I, and not specifically. Um, okay. You know, it's. Uh, Are we going to get you out to one of these off road events with us? Yeah, that's that's the plan. Like like I said, we were talking earlier uh, in the day and uh, trying to figure out exactly which event uh, or, or events that that we're going to go to. Um, but yes, that is the plan to to create more of a brand awareness at some of these off road events, um, you know, nationwide. Cool. Well, Again, I appreciate everything that South Bend has done to uh, help to bring this for all of us that uh, kind of be SOL, I think, with the, the manual uh, transmission without these options. So appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate you coming on tonight, Delton, taking up your evening to Absolutely. share with us information. And, uh, you know, hopefully this will help us to be able to make awareness out there that there is an option. I, it, it surprises me how often I talk to somebody that just didn't even know they replaced a clutch on the Bronco already. And they didn't even know there was an option other than the stock. Yeah. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the OE doesn't have very good availability. Even no, the stock no. Replacement I, right man, now. we should have asked uh, so, uh, Dave that earlier, but I'm pretty sure he said that it was like three or four week back order. Um, it's getting better and, than it was, but yeah. Well, and that's one thing that's nice. Um, uh, another thing I'll touch on is the, uh, with the, specifically with the Bronco clutch, because we're using a, uh, a solid flywheel and we're using a larger disc, we're using none, none of the components that make up this assembly are Bronco specific. And so therefore, literally Bronco can go or, or Ford can go completely backordered or obsolete the clutch and I'll still be able to make it because I'm not using any Ford parts. Um, so I'm not relying on an OE part to build the component that, that I'm offering. So in general, that's something that we can get out rather quickly. And that's been a nice thing. I mean, it's, yeah, it's good when I have somebody call me and say, Hey, I've got a bad clutch. How quickly can I get one? And I can put the order in and it, it ships very, very quickly. So we, well, we're, we're going to talk about that off air, Tyler. Yeah. We're going to actually um, we're going to actually start requiring you to order these Bronco clutches by the skid so that you don't have to have me ship them out so that your customers can actually call you and you can ship it the same day. <laughs> OK, well, we need we need more room in our uh, in our garage. Right. <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll work on that. But uh, yeah, again, no, availability, availability is pretty good on these things right now. 
they've been great to work with. So, all right, Delton, uh, I'm actually make Justin come on. So Delton, we'll let you go. Appreciate your time. And we will, uh, we'll talk to you real soon. For sure. Thanks. Well, let's see. Do we have, well, Justin, there he is. All right, Justin, how are you? Ah, hey, good. How are you? Adding. <laughs> so, you know, we wanted to, I, I hate being on here just by myself or me and Amy by ourselves. So I figured I'm going to, I'm going to make you jump on with us. And, no yeah. warning, no warning whatsoever. I know, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> he does that to me all the time too. Totally fine. So I don't want to forget anything. Uh, I want to be able to talk about some of the stuff that's been going on. And if you haven't already, check out our, our video with Matt's Off-Road Recovery. So as I talked about last week, some of you guys jinxed us the week before when... Uh, Hard. Yeah, it was, <laughs> but it was fun. Matt's, Matt is such a cool guy, him and his team. And we we actually enjoyed spending some time with them. And and then they invited us, asked us to come back out as a vendor to uh, to be at the record games. And man, what a what an incredible time. I mean, like no other experience I've been to. I mean, it wasn't quite as wild and crazy as King of the Hammers, maybe, but there were people everywhere um, hiking up in the hills to watch this whole thing. And uh, it was a good time, met, met some good people and got some great content. I'm super excited with the video that uh, I haven't even shared what I've got put together yet to Justin and Justin's going to do the, the finishing, making it polished, but uh, almost done with it. So this week, uh, in the next day or two, we'll have it polished up and ready to give to you guys because we had, I mean, I'm not even going to ruin it for you. Anywhere from my 15-year-old uh, driving the shoot to um, me going backwards, which you guys have seen on social media, little glimpses and more of that story to a Jeep that followed up behind and, and rolled down and Amy breaking again. I'm leaving most of that out because she got a little mad at me, so... <laughs> But we had a lot of fun, um, and so be checking out for that video. It's it's going to be a great one. Uh, super excited to get that one to you. We we had uh, several people with us that you'll get to meet and know a little bit more. Jake, our our good friend Jake, uh, was just he's hilarious. So he he's got to be my new comedian in the show from from now on. So, uh, anyways, some other updates. Uh, were you able? Did you get that picture of the bumper that we can pop I up? Do. I'll bring that up right now. So as you guys might know, we've, we're working on a, a bumper. Um, we are on, this is version two. Uh, I got a lot of feedback that, that helps, um, good and bad. You know, some, some people in some of the forums hated the hoop, which I'm not a fan of myself. Uh, that was more Talon's version of a, of a bull bar option. Um, we have some that love it, some that hate it. But uh, the biggest thing is we wanted to create a bumper that works for the stock, the one and a half inch and the three inch body lift. So right now this is at a three inch body lift, but it literally has the holes in the back of the plate that it can go on any one of them. It doesn't have to be built specifically. It, it is made to go on there. Um, it's got a location for a winch. Um, we're going to get, you know, I had a lot of people ask, well, will this winch fit? Will this winch fit? You know. There's a lot of figuring out there to see what all winches will fit, but we wanted a winch that didn't set up on top and block the camera, which by the way, the bull bar location does not block the camera where we have it. So that was part of, you know, Talon's putting that together in his design. Um, but it will have a winch that it will suck in tight there. It's, it's kept close to the vehicle so that we have um, a good approach angle. And uh, I think it just looks good. So um, some of the questions was, uh, are we going to still have to relocate our uh, adaptive cruise control? Yes. There's really no way around it. If I'm going to put a winch inside of it, um, you're going to, we're going to be blocking the, the adaptive cruise control. So very, very little I can do there with this design. And unfortunately I wish, I wish we could, um, let's see. Uh, was there other anyways so hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea and we'll we'll be finishing up uh the final versions of it um we'll try and add different options so that it can be a little bit versatile um like if you want to add the bull bar it'll have the holes there ready to go for that that sort of thing 
Um, geez, what else am I missing? Oh, I know. We need to talk about October's coming really, really quick. So I'm going to, we're going to talk just for a second about uh, Wheeling for a Cause again. Um, we've actually had a huge response. We've had other, um, we've had other people that have reached out and uh, um, want to set up, they're setting up, I guess, off-road events across the country that they're doing many fundraisers to help us raise funds for this. So we're really looking forward to this coming October. Um, we're still finalizing all of the details as we get closer, who this cause will be for, how it'll benefit. It will stay veteran um, direction. So I have had, you know, already had several ideas from people across the country and uh, we're, you know, we definitely want to get the word out and help you. But right now our, our focus is on helping our uh, support our veterans. And that is our cause. Of course, we have a couple of uh, nonprofits that we work with. Uh, so others may live and Camp Freedom that are, you know, helping partners in this and helping the veterans. So if you haven't already put on your calendar, make sure October 13th, 14th, 15th, um, is on your agenda. We uh, we hope to have you out uh, here to Texas. It'll be hopefully uh, a great time, great weather. Um, I think uh, I think I've covered about what's that? Yeah, a couple more things in the comments there. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. What's that? A couple more things in the comments. Yeah. So curious about the skid. We will be running factory still. I trimmed mine and tucked it up under the ARB bumper. Um, so yes, it, I mean, right there, the picture, actually, let me go back to, uh, uh, stop the screen share. We'll go back to that picture. If you can pull out, uh, actually, I got it. So on that picture, you'll see that bottom uh, factory skid plate is still there. So will we develop something else that, uh, that we'll offer to go with that? Yes. Um, but that's, that's as far as we've gotten right now. We're going to stick with, you know, get the bumper dialed in. Then we're going to work on a rear bumper design and then we're going to work on other armor and protection. So it's one thing at a time. We got a lot of, uh, a lot of irons and a lot of different fires. Of course, you know, we're, we're doing this with our, our partners up in Idaho. Um, Talon's working on this project. This was something that to uh, him and, and Craig Dopp, uh, Craig is, is the owner of uh, uh, CK Metalworks in uh, Preston, Idaho. And, They've, they've been working with us from day one of Bronkbuster to make our other metal parts, relocation brackets and stuff. And then, of course, we have our partners here in Texas that we work with, and we're work doing the armadillo design, uh, the hardtop, the, uh, the light brackets, the, um, we got a whole, ver oh, the uh, racket roof, um, all of that stuff we're doing here in, uh, here in Texas with uh, Texas Fabco. Um, so, anyways, we got a lot of, a lot of, irons and a lot of different fires and we're trying to make sure that we bring you the best products we can so looks like terry has an idea yeah uh, oops, all right so wider version to protect my advanced fiberglass fenders um yeah let me uh i'll, I'll uh i'll have talon look at that uh because i have the same thing i have the advanced fiberglass and that might be uh, yeah let, let me take a look at that terry for sure um, we can't wait to come back. Yes, we can't wait for you guys either. Um, Derek and Monica are just awesome guys to hang out with. We were able to spend more time with them uh, here at uh, United by Bronco. Um, actually, several of you that are on tonight were there, and and uh, we had a lot of fun, and definitely look forward to that again. Uh, Ron Jacobson, installing rock slide steps, have three inch body lift. Wonder about body mount attachment points. Does anyone make brackets? Or am I on my own? Okay, Ron, good question. I do cover that in our install video, but I'll cover it again here because that is that is something I get a lot of calls on. Um, in our opinion, and I've verified this with Rockslide, they're good with it. Um, we've, we've eliminated those. Those brackets that go to the body mount, uh, we've actually cut them back so that they don't rub and interact with anything and, uh, and install without it. And I didn't want to, you know, just push that out there and say, everybody do that until I've tested. Well, I have plenty of content that you guys can go and watch of me putting the entire weight of the vehicle and slamming down on it 
and turning around and, you know, literally uh, last week we talked about it too. If you look at the underside of my rock slides and they still work, but you know, I'm starting to get dents and scratches and all these things. So if I felt like it was even remotely a problem, we would come up with a different mounting point to attach that back. Um, it's not needed is, is the answer to that. So let's see. All right. Well, um, uh, yeah. if I'm not missing anything, we're right at that uh, hour. Wow. That hour went quick. So we appreciate everybody coming on. Uh, it's been a great, uh, great show. I think talked about the clutch. Uh, that's been a passion of mine for a year. It was a long project. It was a lot of work and uh, we're excited to be able to offer that. So, oh, with that, this week we're offering free shipping. So if you place an order on a clutch, free shipping on that. So let us, you know, let us know if that's something you'd like. We have it, uh, I think Justin, you have it in the website to where on checkout, it'll automatically give free shipping for the next week. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so you don't even have to do anything. Just go on, get your clutch. And uh, Josh, buddy, I know it's not your birthday yet, but to tell your wife that this is an early birthday for June, you need this clutch. <laughs> you need it. So I think we got, who else do we have that's got a, uh, a manual transmission? Anybody that's on here tonight? If not, that's all right. But uh, definitely uh, it, it makes a big difference. So. Robert got his already. He's got his put in already. Robert. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about uh, um, that. Robert already has one, so we got we got two um, on here tonight. Robert has one, so we uh, we hope you guys enjoy this show, and we'll see you next week. Uh, don't forget, same time, same uh, same location, and we will talk to you then. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Bye.